What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. There you are. There's your dad joke opener. Welcome back. Busy Gamer Dad session three and our third and final session for Tamarack Trail. I'm having a fun time playing this game. I'm not going to go through the mechanics or anything like that, but I will give you a quick overview as a recap. If you would like to see the other uh, episodes, they do a more in-depth dive on the mechanics of the game to let you guys know what you're getting into. But what is Tamarack Trail? Tamarack Trail is basically a deck customization game roguelite scenario where you pick a path. Every battle, you get a card panel. They, I, I call them panels. They're basically faces for the dice. And instead of like customizing a deck, you customize your dice. There's a lot of good synergies that you can create. Uh, there's ones that flip the dice to other sides. So you can create infinite combos. There's status effects dice. There's stealth dice. There's all sorts of things. And I really do uh, enjoy the play. Um, it's really fun. The challenges of navigating the complexities of the dice is really rewarding when you get those infinite combos. But I figured I'd bring you guys back in midway through my run, uh, getting up to the, we'll call him second boss. He's quite intimidating. Uh, I got to him a few other times and uh, he just starched me, just destroyed me. I didn't have the right d uh, dice for it. Um, I'm thinking I'm in a little bit of a better spot and we'll find out right now. Otherwise, this run is going to be really, really short. And I will pick it up right again where we left off, where I will uh, go right from the start and have some fun. Oh, drowsy. That means I don't regen as much resolve. <clears throat> so the mechanics of the game, like I said, I'm not going to go too far into them, but you have a resource meter, you resolve, you have your shield and you regenerate resolve every turn. If you're interested in more in-depth analysis for the mechanics, I implore you to go back to the other two videos. They do a bit of a deep dive for it so that you know what you're getting into and so you can understand what the um, uh, thousand foot view of the mechanics are in general. We apply buffs and debuffs and attacks and uh, uh, stuff like that through the dice rolls. You can re-roll the dice. I uh, implore you not to do it willy-nilly because I don't know the mechanic for recharging them. I don't know if I want to exhaust that yet, so I'm not going to do that. Um, looks like he exhausted one of my dice, though. The jerk. That's not cool. What did you do? Foolish deal five damage per stack. Oh, dear. All right, so I need to make sure that that is... Uh, so I'm shielded. I got the counterattack there. I did pick up two uh, dice cores um, for myself. I got this one that was uh, available last run where uh, we flip the dice and it removes a, a debuff from us, a random one. And then I have this one on uh, for defense every time the dice flips, or sorry, every defensive maneuver gives me another two defense, which is kind of huge actually, because if you build a defensive dice that, uh, that flips, then you're getting all sorts of uh, hefty bonuses for that. I'm actually gonna do that because I don't know what he's doing. It doesn't let me know. Um, this one of scares me with this. I, he's got a lot of health pool, so I'm just going to try and mitigate as much as I can. Whittle down his uh, resolve meter to the best of my ability. And uh, looks like this is going to be a good war of attrition. The boss fights feel weighty. The boss fights do, in fact, feel like true bosses, and you have to pay attention to what's going on. He's only going to be attacking for four, so we can kind of swing for the fences here. Um... I don't know if I want to go too... I mean, I guess... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. That one was free. Defense dice usually are free. There are uh, uh, different dice faces that you can get that... Like this one here, the uh, Deadly Patient, that gives us shield at the same time as... Um, gives us uh, an exposed debuff to the monsters who attack us. So really helpful against on that uh, defense core. It procs it more and we're able to, to get some really good benefits from that and some good synergies about it. Uh, let's do this there, whittle him down, did the exposed defense, broke that away. I don't know if I want to exhaust this. I don't see the benefit right now because I'd have to spend double the re to redo it. Uh, yeah, I think, we're, I think we're in a pretty good spot. This is just uh, basically the mechanics. This is the game right here. So I will be able to recover my counter attack, which is gonna be really helpful. Overall, uh, I am going to shield that one because that's going to be really nice to do. And then, yeah, we'll get a little bit of damage out on it. Good stuff. I did a run in between. Oh, no. No, that's not good. That Well, I mean, we have 15 stacks of it, so I guess it's okay. And that comes up quite a bit because of how I have this dice laid out where I can flip to that. So I should be able to recover that pretty quick. 
Um, I did a run in between, oh, actually I did like, I think three runs. I fell victim to the one more run situation that uh, made me go to bed, I think at like 11.30 and I usually go to bed at like 10. Uh, it's a busy gamer life, but I was just like one more run, one more battle, one, one, more, one more dice. I wanna see what they, I wanna see what we can do. So yeah, it, this game had got me hooked pretty hard. Um, I really think they have a great product here. I think they have a really good um, foundation, if nothing else, to build from for this with the uh, the dice rolling, very rem reminiscent of like Astraea, the Six-Sided Oracle, uh, the Pick a Path, very similar to any of the roguelites that are out there, but done with a really cool art style. This uh, almost like Disney uh, um, or uh, major motion picture era uh, uh, cells that you have for backgrounds that are cascaded and you have these animated um, uh, portraits over the, not even portraits, animated whole characters and monsters over the top of it. I think it's really cool. I think they have a really nice art style. I think they have a really good product here. And I do, and that's not a paid endorsement. They they did give me an opportunity to review the game, but I, I think that this is well worth your time um, to invest in, to play around with, and see if it's something that you like. I truly do. Now, do I want to lean into this? He doesn't have the exposed weakness. I don't want to exhaust that yet. And he's only hitting me for two, so I'm not going to do that. So there's my there's my spiel about it. Now, the constructive criticisms that I would say about the game. There are a couple of graphical glitches, and um, I don't know if you have seen them or not, but I will call them out. When you have multiple monsters on the screen, sometimes the monsters, when they reposition, pull the screen to the right, and you get this weird blue rectangle block on the side here from the screen that goes this way. I don't know if it's just because I killed two monsters in one go, and they all shifted really hard and the screen didn't have this boundary edge to, to uh, get or something like that. That's just something that's like a subtle nuance and aesthetics kind of thing, an immersion break kind of thing. The other thing is the overworld map. We'll get to it um, and I'll show it to you. But I, I, I like the overworld map, but there's some, I would call it uh, uh, undulation or um, movement of the graphics that they have overlaid on each other that's a little distorted or a little jarring and i would think that like the geese that fly over or the clouds that fly over they would obscure some of the nodes because the idea is the nodes are on the ground as opposed to in the air but maybe that's just my own you know subtle uh, uh indifference or um being over analytical about it uh but yeah that's just the only the only two things that i can think about from that from the aesthetic side of things the last thing I will call out is I would love to see a combat log. I would absolutely love to see a combat log. Let the player know exactly how the dice are affecting each other from them to you and you to them. Have it be on the underside of this. You just right click this if you had a question about what happened. And it really will help the community grow and be like, oh, that synergizes with that and that goes to that. All things that you really, you know, maybe want to have the players look under the i don't want to say look under the hood but to just trust but verify that your player base is understanding the full scope and scale of what's going on with your game that's all those are the few constructive criticisms where you can right click the back side of this uh, mat right here and it'll flip it over and you can read what happens should you want to In some cases most people probably won't the last thing is a constructive criticism is you'll notice that i have this button here that i'm not clicking this is an automatic dice roll Whenever you do this, there is a super high percentage chance that the dices will clack together. And when they collide, they cost more and they also offer certain buffs depending on the dice face that you have selected. Now, that's a lot of information that you have to take uh, with a grain of salt because I don't currently have any dice that really are contingent on that effect. Um, because... Sometimes when you do the auto dice roll for expediency, you wind up hitting your dice together and um, really, uh, I don't want to say exponentially, but really increasing your cost per use on abilities. Because when you hit the dice together, this two ability for Bushwhack would potentially cost three or four, depending on how many times you hit the dice together. Now, there are certain dice, and this is... I'm sorry, I, I said I wouldn't do this, but this is getting into the minutia. There are certain dice that really do require that to have any function whatsoever in your build. And I get that, I totally do. But with the auto roll feature, if you have that there for expediency, you kind of remove that function for players like myself in this current run that do not have 
that uh, uh, deck build, essentially, or dice build in their in their current strategy. So, just some food for thought. I don't know how you would address that if you um, if you had like some type of uh, uh, feature there where you could take the the, the randomness out of it where you have the four dice drop in the four corners and you have a button here for that mode or something like that. I don't know. I'm just bringing it up just so the player knows and just so when you guys get in here, you're like, oh, this auto roll dice always clacks my dice together and makes them super expensive. That's that's its function. That's honestly what I, I view this as its function to do that. If you have those builds to do that, you have to be careful about that. Like I said, though, because there are certain um, builds and certain uh, situations where that's not uh, advantageous for the player because your resolve never grows at least on this character I've never had it grow past 25 there may be certain events or things like that that I'm missing that uh, uh, do have it permanently grow in a run or maybe there's something in the meta progression that allows your resolve to grow in a run but I have not run into that just yet so there's my there's my little dissertation hopefully you find it helpful hopefully you find it um, endearing and understand one thing this is one data point Play the game for yourself. Leave a comment and let me know if I got something wrong. Because I'm just a guy playing games when he's got a busy schedule. And I'm just looking at this to unwind. And if I've missed something just because I am not... Did that guy have a cane? ADHD moment. I just beat up a newt that had a cane. I feel bad about myself and my life choices. Anyways, I'm... Like I said, I'm, I'm just a busy guy playing some games unwind after a day. And this game has been nothing but fun for me to play and enjoy. So, yeah, let me know if you do pick this up, how it works for you. But I will show you right here that one mechanic. So I'm going to actually make this an attack dice. And then right here. But, so right here, this bleed effect, Jagged Bolt. Apply three bleed per dice hit. So the only way this functions is if I hit it against other dice. That's the only way it functions, period. I'm actually going to do two and two. That way I get a little bit more defense because we're getting into a situation now where we're going to have um, the monsters that ended my my uh, first run. Tea Leaf Turtle, your attention is drawn to an unusual sight. Before you lies the lifeless body of a turtle. It's withered shell adorned with vibrant tea leaves that sprout from its back. Leave a 20 gold offering. I'm going to pick the tea leaves? Oh, okay. You delicately pluck a handful of vibrant foliage. As you do so, a sense of vigor washes over you. Heal one, but lose one regen. Is that permanent? That's That might be permanent. Maybe I should have just prayed. I feel like I just desecrated a corpse. All right. So, now we're into the... I would call this scenario or act three. Or maybe 1.5. Um, depending on how you look at the world map. These dogs, you have to be careful and read these buffs here, or debuffs, or active features, whatever you want to call them, because if you're not going to pay attention to this, you're going to have a bad time. Apply Scare to Hero when wounded. Scare attacks your hearts directly. You have to be careful how you handle these dogs, because what ended my run that was really good, I thought, was I took out all the dogs really quickly, not realizing that this attack bypasses my resolve. So I wound up um, hurting myself overall because I was not paying attention. This counterattack may end up killing me in our run here just because of the nature of what it does. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Because uh, the counterattack, or I'm, I shouldn't say counterattack. I'm the, that's not the counterattack. That's the deadly patient one. That exposes their weaknesses. Um, I have a counterattack uh, porcupine on one of my uh, dice faces, and if I'm not careful, when that counterattack goes off, I could end up killing myself, is what it boils down to. Uh, let's see here, what is this? Soul Bite, that's not good. What is this one? Equal, apply one damage per stack, equals to applier gain equal to resolved. Okay, so that's a that's interesting. All right, now this one, I think attacks everybody. Oh, flip. Yep, and then I'm going to lean into you. And then I'm going to do the deadly patience and get a little bit more shield. I'm going to keep going on you. And then I think.
think I can actually damage the, I guess those are hearts, but I'm not certain. So right here. So the dead, the undead heart, apply one scare. This is the scare. Lose one heart at three stacks. Remove all scare stacks. So if I damage him again, for any reason, I get another stack. So you have to be very careful about how you handle these monsters. So you have to split your damage essentially is what I'm saying. Because if I attack him again, he's going to apply a second one here. This ticks off after one turn, but you'll see that it's also a, an exercise in expediency because of the soul bite ability here. So I have to be very, very careful about how I do this. You don't want this fight to go on forever, but you also don't want to um, sit on your hands and wait. You have to really lean into them. All right, so this mechanic right here that I was talking about before, you see how I apply zero bleed? So now what I need to do is I need to drop this dice on top of it. And now this would apply three bleed. In my previous build, this is also what got me because I was hitting them with bleeds and they wound up just basically destroying me because the bleeds attack their hearts and it would rip basically all my hearts out. Uh, I am going to dodge that. Oh, the last thing that I would think is a quality of life improvement is I would love to know the order in which these guys attack. I have no clue. Is it always going to be greatest to uh, least? Is it going to be less to greatest? Is it going to be front to back, back to front? I would love to know their order of um, operations just so I have that in the back of my head for when I can plan things out. Now, you do seven. I'm going to hit this guy, and then I'm going to get a scare. And then I'm going to apply... Oh, do I want to do this? I think I'm going to apply the... Let me apply the bleed to you. There, because that doesn't do any damage. And then that will hopefully... Now I can't do anything here, because if I attack you, I'm going to get another scare. So I'm going to have to share the wealth right around there. Nice. So that'll damage mitigate a little bit, because the blind... Right, there's that, there's that, they're gonna go off. So it did look like in that round they did go from greatest to least, which is great. So we have one more ability here. I'm gonna change plans and I'm gonna recharge some resolve. I can only do that once per combat. It's just the nature of the beast, as it were. Um, no pun intended. Uh, oh, I don't want that. I do need to recover that though. Uh, let's see here. I don't want that. We'll drop that right there. And then, oh, I hit the dice together accidentally. Shoot, that's gonna cost two now. Oh no, it still costs two. This one's two as well, okay, few. Um, no, this one costs one normally, dang it. All right, well, I'll be able to finish this guy off, which will reduce the amount of overall damage I would take. And I'll take the scare. This one will hit him for two and apply confuse to him, which is perfectly okay and then I will shield myself for a little bit more nice okay and then I was going to automatically go to their turn yep keep on applying those ex exposed weaknesses I I really do appreciate that that helps me in the long run it really does but now I have to be super careful because I'm running pretty low on resolve I'm gonna get a heal right here I need to get some more armor Nope, I can't attack because I already got a scare on me. I can't attack because I already got a scare on me. Uh, do I want to do the attack? I could finish him in this turn, but I will take scare damage. I think... If I do this right there, then he's primed and ready for next round. I don't have a counterattack, so he's not going to die. This should be okay. Yeah, because he's going to hit that, and you're not going to penetrate you and hit my... You did. Oh, shoot, because of the other ability. Darn it! Alright, so we lost one hit point. Uh, So we are able to finish off... I think we will be? Well, we might not be able to, unless we roll something that's an attack here. There we go. Okay. So we'll finish this one off. That's 11 damage that we do not have to worry about. And then... Uh, yeah, we'll just apply that so they don't have so much uh, resource regeneration there. And then they'll attack us, but they won't get through our shield, which is great. And then these will bleed off each turn, which is good. Reduce it by one each turn, which is great. Uh, I will shield myself. And then bleed effect, that's fine. I will drop you. So 
I will take this guy and I will apply that right there. And then I can actually hit you for 10. And then I could dodge, but I don't want to exhaust that right now and then have to recover it. So I'm just going to leave that alone. And then I am actually going to hit you for one. Hit your life sources for one, which is great. And then I will end my turn. Nice. Awesome. Didn't get through our shield, which is good stuff. And drop that. Uh, yep, we win. Bang. Good stuff. Let's see here. Drowsy, AoE. All of these cost... No, this one costs one. Um... Let's do that. So I currently don't have a infinite combo car, uh, dice. I probably should build one up just to have one. I don't know which one I want to do that with, though. Maybe this one here, because I have three already that flip. So let's see here. So if I do that one goes to there, those two would infinite combo back and forth to each other, and that would exhaust them. And they're pretty low cost. Um... What about you? If I do that to there, they both go to the attack. There, to there. Um, what if I do this, 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 this? Close. I could do just these two back and forth if I really wanted to. And then that this one dodging would bring around the infinite combo. And then this one and this one would be like just pain train, essentially. Unless I did... that which would bring this to an infinite combo yeah i think i like that idea and then that one is my next route into that combo okay cool that works for me so now we have several routes to get into the infinite combo uh which way do we want to go do we want to go up and get some treasure chests or do we want to go down to the camp there is a camp here let's do this way let's go to the up route more dogs more ethereal dogs. We're fighting zero from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. We're a bunch of jerks. We are. We're absolutely a bunch of jerks. All right, let me focus on this dog this time around. Let's see if that helps anything at all. Uh, so that'll do more damage, and that will flip. This will do damage to them all, and then we're going to get our infinite combo right here. Right there. So that should bring that up, and that's going to be... Yep, see? Right there. So we did one, two, three, four damage, and we took one hit right there. And we have one more left. This is why I do not like fighting these dogs. They are just vicious. I I can't fight any of them. I can't hit any of them. If I do, I'm going to lose the game. Okay. So there we are. We did get a fair amount of resolve back, though. So be warned, infinite combos, not always the best choice to do. Not always the best choice to execute. But we did a lot of damage. Uh, I'll need to knock these dice together so that I can apply... I guess I'll apply the bleed effect to you because you're the next dog in quote-unquote line. And then you will die. I'll take a hit there. I can always hope that the stealth comes up. Nope, that's not going to come up there. Uh, if I hit you, that's for seven and applies a blind. Sure. Right there. Oh, he had a shield on. I didn't see that. Yeah. So, again, that, that circles back to the tool tipping. Just a little bit of a, a quality of life improvement to understand how, thing, how things are going to play out. Being a little bit clearer for the player. That's all. I think that this is a great system and the player should be paying attention. But having the... Uh, stuff slapped right in their faces, leaving them no excuse to, but to uh, read and understand and get involved in the game. So that's got, we got a shield of eight. I can hit you. I'm going to do that there, and then we'll take a scare, which is fine. And then I'm not going to hit, well, I can hit you, and I'm going to do that. Keep your resolve low. Bleed, I'm glad, didn't tick off because that would give me another secondary scare. Even though it might have finished them off, it's I, I don't want to ride the rails with another another scare on there. Um, I can do this. This is going to do four damage and then flip. Basically, my 
my there. Okay, that's my turn, basically. I'm not going to do anything else, because if I hit this guy again, I can't finish him off. Yeah, I'm going to maybe do another stealth. I'm rolling these because I have some buffs on them that I can use. You should always roll all your dice. It doesn't... I've not seen a situation where not rolling all your dice is beneficial. Um, maybe there are circumstances where that would apply, but personally, I have not seen that. All right, so we got that right there. Let's see here. Drop this right here. So we're going to get the infinite combo again, which is good with me because I believe we'll be... Yep. Nice. Awesome. So... What is this one? Watch and learn. What? Gain resolve? That's the first time I think I've seen this one. Gain resolve plus resolve for every dice hit? That's huge. I want that on this dice. Absolutely I do. Because no matter what, this is my, like, knock together die. Uh, yeah, I think I'll leave that where it's at. Let's do the uh, next event here. Keep it moving for you guys so you guys can see more of this content. I'm going to do that. They're going to shield. I'm going to get rid of that first dog. That seemed to work out really well, apart from the situation where I hit him and got into an infinite combo. And uh, took away one of my life points. Uh, oh, the stealth is going to be huge because that's going to reduce all the damage that comes in. Nice, and then they'll take that, and then they're just going to put a shield on everybody. A bit unfortunate, but that's fine. There we are. Okay, we'll get this guy right here for the exposed weakness. Uh, yeah, we'll dodge. We'll dodge, and then I will hit this one here, and then I will hit him again. And then we have a scare on us. I can't use this, because if I do, I'm going to end up hurting myself. Not okay. We have a dodge there, and... Yeah, this hits everyone. That hits everyone, so I'm... No, I didn't want to do that. Okay, good. Phew. That worked out in our favor. I didn't want to do that. Phew. Very glad. So, right-clicking is how you deactivate the dice that you have selected. I double-clicked accidentally. Uh, so... I'm actually going to take yours down and apply the blind. Nice. Good. Awesome. Uh, that's gonna remove that. This die, if I can get it to flip, we get the removal of any random debuff, which is helpful against the scares, which is part of the reason why I brought this, or bought, got that one, because I kind of knew what I was getting into. Uh, let's hit that, and then this will help with the resolve, get that fixed right there. Nice. And then we have a counterattack and a shield, good stuff. And we have another shield. Uh, I'll hold on to it for now. Oh, I hit the dice together accidentally. I'm a big idiot. Not a big deal, though. We'll apply the blind. And then we'll, we'll shield. It's not a big deal. Shielding is free, so you might as well do it. At least that's what I say. Alright, so I'm going to do this right here. Get a little bit more resolve. Um, we'll apply that. And we'll apply that. And then... Yeah, we'll hit this guy. That's gonna hit him for one more damage. And then if we get this dice rolling... Oh, shoot. Unfortunately, it's just blanket damage. Not a big deal, though. We'll spread the damage around. And then we'll hit this guy. Take a hit there. We'll have two, which is fine. We'll just do the exposed weakness. We don't have a counterattack at this point. Okay, so again, get the shield going there. And then, oh, that's, uh, let's do that. So then we'll apply a bleed to you. We can hit you for that. Let's do it. And then that dice flip. And then this one should flip? Question mark? Yep, there it is, the flip. And then we got back to one. And then flip. It's going to remove it. And it's going to apply that one there. And then that's going to infinite combo. And we'll clear the board. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, do I want another counterattack? I think that might be okay, but I maybe the exploit weakness is probably the better play. Um, 
Yeah, I like the exploit weakness one better because that just leads into making this a little bit uh, better because this should go to here. Yeah, that'll work out there. Okay, cool. Awesome. Let's try that out and see how that works. And we'll go into the event. Tea ceremony. A group of cultists, each masked with an enigmatic guy, stand encircled around one central figure. The central cultist holds a teacup brimming with eerie flickering flames. Oh, dear. Uh, we picked tea leaves off a turtle, and we got minus resolve and a heal. Why don't we just observe? Yes, you opt for stealth. Yes, excellent. That works for me. Awesome. All right, well, so this was Busy Gamer Dad showing you guys Tamarack Trail. I think this game is awesome, worth your time. Wishlist it, pick it up while it's on sale, buy it outright, whatever have you. This is great because you can actually stop the runs uh, <laughs> in between where you have a save and quit feature and come back to it uh, at a later date. Stop any run that you're in the middle of and pick it up at a later date. Perfect for the Busy Gamer. I like the game. I think the art style is a lot of fun if that was not apparent. I think that you guys will too. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And without any further banter, bid you all a great day. Later.